I just want to find 11,780 votes. The Fulton County Grand Jury investigation of Donald Trump. What proves fact A, fact B, and fact C? If we can do that, I'm going to bring an indictment. I'm Bill Rankin. I'm Tamar Hallerman. Join us for season nine of Breakdown from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Listen now, and please follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Today on the show, a clog trend has swept the high fashion world. You heard that right. Clogs, like the shoes. And one of our producers thinks Portland might have played a part in it. So she's tracked down an expert in the field to try and prove her point. Let's see if she can convince us. It's Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is CityCast Portland. So Julia, you've brought us a story that you've been working on for years now. (laughs) It's it's maybe been a couple of months, Claudia. (laughs) It's been a couple of long months. What's the obsession? <laughs> like, why Why are we still talking about clogs? Okay, well, I have a bit of a story. When I first moved here from Toronto about a year ago, I noticed almost immediately that I saw a lot of people wearing clogs around town. And then I saw actual clog shops in my area, places where people could go and get custom clogs made in all different shapes and sizes. Wait, so you're saying, like, this isn't a thing in other places? This is <laughs> somehow unique to Portland? Yeah, like, there was this one time... I was actually shopping at a Goodwill just a few weeks after I had moved here, and I came across this entire aisle full of clogs. They had different designs on the top of them, different types of leather. Some of them had fur, strapless ones Stra- with a back. A strapless, <laughs> a sexy strapless <laughs> clog. Exactly. And I had actually turned to somebody next to me in the aisle just out of curiosity for this question of if clogs are a thing in Portland. And I had asked, what's the deal with clogs? And she had told me that she knew for a fact that Portlanders don't really care what they wear. That's just that's hurtful. That's just how it is. Okay. And for that reason, I went ahead and bought myself a pair of clogs that day. And I went home with these very strange looking uh, cheetah print clogs with fur on the top that yes. I don't wear, <laughs> admittedly, but they're in my closet. <laughs> when I think of a clog, I think of like a wooden little boat for your foot. You got it. Yes. That's the main definition of it is just a shoe with a wooden platform. But nowadays, people have kind of run with the definition to make it what they like. As long as it kind of looks like a clog, people will call it a clog. And that's what's trending right now. They're actually trending outside of Portland. So when you look on TikTok, hashtag clog has over 60 million views. That's ridiculous. And different fashion magazine tabloids catching people's eye. I refuse to believe all of this. (laughs) So much so that they've been selling out on shelves and being sold for some pretty ridiculous prices. But really, yes. And and this all made me wonder, since clogs have always been popular in Portland, if Portland set the trend for the shoe. And I got in touch with the owner of Multnomah Leather Shop, Mark Casperson, who's a clog maker himself and has been doing it his entire life. And I really want you to talk to him today. If I mean, if it'll make you stop pitching clogs, (laughs) this will be it. If I can get you to talk to Mark. (laughs) All right. (laughs) When we come back, we're going to hear from Mark Casperson. Mark, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. This is uh, Claudia, by the way. I mentioned you to her over email. Claudia, hi. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Julia's a big fan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What I first wanted to ask you, Mark, was your thoughts on all the hype that clogs have been getting by like TikTok tastemakers. I was just reading that a Birkenstock clog went viral on TikTok and it sold out everywhere. And it's now reselling for triple the price. Do you think that somehow Portland had anything to do (laughs) with this clog trend? Uh, Trends come and go. And I've seen them do this a couple times. And it just seems that somebody catches sight of something and says, oh, that looks cool. And they're a cool person. So they, they get followed by people, especially on TikTok. Have you seen an increase of clog sales at all because of these TikTok trends? Or has it just been slow and steady for you? 
I think our customers are a different group than the TikTok followers, but <laughs> we have had people order very tall shoes. Usually after they get them on and wear them for six months, they may bring them back in to have a saw it down to a normal height. Uh, that's happened a couple times. I'm not eager to get on TikTok to show my clogs. Um, <laughs> you could be making thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds. I don't know. I really don't know how TikTok works either. Why is it that clogs are the shoe that keep coming in and out of like the fashion zeitgeist every 20 years, it seems? It seems about right. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. If I could figure that out, I'd probably be better off than I am now. Well, something that Julia brought up um, to me as to why I needed to talk to you, Mark, was that she saw that clogs were just so prominent in Portland and defied trends, that they're just a mainstay. And basically, she thinks it's Portland's shoe. And so why do you think clogs are so prominent in this city? Well, you know, standing at bus stops wearing clogs, which put you an inch and a half above the water that's dripping <laughs> around you. And it that's does true. keep you significantly drier if they're fitted properly. They can be resold and made to last longer. So if you get 20 or 30 years out of a pair of clogs, that's about average. They're a simple shoe to make, but if you do it carefully and do it with good materials, they can last a whole long time. Okay, so you're saying they're functional, um, possibly they keep your feet dry. How did Portland get so many clogs, though? I mean, they must have come from somewhere. Well, originally, this business of ours was started by Oscar Osted, who came to the United States from Norway, where he had made shoes for the uh, fishermen there on the boats. And it was sloppy, messy weather. And when he came to this country, he started to make those out of his garage for people who worked at like Tillamook Cheese Factory and other people that were on their feet all day. Oh, wow. Uh, and it seemed to be catching on. So he decided to open a retail shop in the Multnomah Hotel building. So you're saying that before Oscar clogs weren't really a thing in Portland. I think that's correct. Yes. During the war, they became very popular because you did not need a ration coupon to buy the shoes. I think I heard something about residents of Japanese internment camps during World War II also somehow being connected to clogs. All I know about that is a customer who was the younger brother of one of the residents of the camps brought in a picture of his sister and several other people in their group who had our clogs. And I believe that that was just because those were the shoes they could get. So let me just like recap. So Oscar comes to Portland. He opens up a shop in the 30s. At this point, is your dad working for him or is that further along? My dad happened to be walking through downtown Portland and saw Oscar in the window of a, his shop nailing clogs. Mm -hmm. And he just walked in and said, I'd like to work for you. Uh, he got a job on the spot. Did your father and, ever tell you like what it was about seeing Oscar make these clogs that he was just like, okay, I I need to start making these shoes too? He never really said much about it. It was just so cool to see a guy making shoes right there that he had to at least try it. My dad worked for Oscar and for his son, Oscar Jr. And by 1964, it had gone into bankruptcy and my dad bought it out of bankruptcy. And I would come down to the shop. I was only 10 years old. I was, he had me writing up the sales for each previous month and uh, keeping a record of that so you could tell when the business was doing well. You started young. <laughs> yeah. I had five older brothers and sisters, and they all wound up working at the shop in their spare time. A clog family. The Caspersons were a clog family. I guess that's true. It's interesting you just didn't call it Caspersons clogs. I mean, did you think about it? It's a good alliteration. Yep. So your dad worked for Oscar. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that your father took the business over during the 60s. Wasn't there like a rise in popularity in the 60s and 70s? People yeah, were wearing was, clogs? It was good timing. Um, the music business went with the really tall clog type shoes in the punk rock and acid rock or whatever those genres were. And we never really made many of them, but they were all special orders and people would ask for them up to six inches taller than normal shoes. And it was interesting trying to get those to fit right and still make them walkable. I think the 70s then brought the platform shoes. I wonder if that yeah. was like just a natural evolution from these clogs, you know? It, it may have been. I was busy making clogs. I didn't ask. <laughs> One day we, we sold 48 pair or something like that, which was a record for us. And that starts to be a lot of business. 
That's crazy. And now platform clogs are cool again. So (laughs) here's another cycle. So how many clogs do you think you've made? I have a a list of the clogs that we've cut out for people that we started to keep in the late 60s. My brother also kept track of how many soles he cut out, the, the wooden soles. He was tasked with cutting those out on a bandsaw at home. Um, and he said he made 40,000 of those. So wow. it was quite a few. So if you're making custom clogs, I'm, I'm curious because Julia has these clogs that have like some sort of cheetah print. <laughs> I don't know. Would you be able to recreate that for her if for some reason she lost these clogs? Well, there are various leathers we can make them. I mean, we have about 50 leathers in our catalog that people can order the clogs in. And is I've, Cheetah one of them? Uh, one of them was, was a printed cow fur uppers and with some with long hair and some with short hair. We've done a lot of things, including alligator. And <gasps> there was a while we did a couple of elephant hide clogs. No, I don't like that. Well, it, elephants. It, 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 that was before it was illegal to buy leather like that in the United States, but we've done quail skin and various things. Nobody does that anymore. It's all faux leather that uh, is made from cow hide, but made to look like water buffalo or other things. We wouldn't have used the leather if it was involved in any kind of illegal gaming or anything like that. Of course. So do you think clogs are going to stick around in Portland? I believe that Portland is unique in having rainy weather and having people walking around in rain. (laughs) <laughs> and that's always been a, a plus for us. And we are happy to repair them and replace them with other clogs. Mark, you've met me now. Yes. Now you know me intimately. Um, what What are the clogs that you would recommend for me? Like, what, what do you think would be my gateway clog? Well, I think just try on a, the standard clog and see how it feels to you. And what about leather? What do you think? What do you think my, my leather would be? Uh, a lot of black goes out out of the store. Uh, oh, black okay. I think you see me. I really do. I think that a black clog would actually be awesome. Or or maybe a uh, suede front and then a, a black back piece that's done in a in a we have a sparkle black that we have that looks really nice. Ooh, like a two tone, so it'd be like brown suede and then black back. Well, we could do that, sure. Oh, did I just make up a new clog? You know what, Mark, you can have that. Casperson's clogs. <laughs> just two tone clogs. You can take that with you. That is my gift to you. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the perfect end to that interview. Is the guest thanking me <laughs> for, for the most ridiculous idea I could possibly think of? So thank you, Mark, for humoring me. Sure. <laughs> well, I'm not 100% convinced Portland can completely take credit for the latest clog trend. It was interesting to learn how deep the history goes. And I'll definitely be stopping by Multnomah Leather for my custom two-tone clogs. And now our lead producer, John Notoriani, is going to give us our microdose of news. Thanks, Claudia. If you've been looking to speed up your commute along Division Street, well, you might be stuck in the slow lane for a little while longer. The Oregonian reports the city's FX2 rapid bus line has not been the runaway success that some riders had hoped for. The bus line promised a major increase in speed and accessibility when the new service debuted three months ago, but it's been marred by disruptions and staffing shortages. And if you caught that nail-biting World Cup final over the weekend, did you notice the turf? It turns out the grass at the World Cup finals came from right here in Oregon, specifically the company Pure Seed. Willamette Week reports that Oregon is the largest producer of grass seed in the country, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Looks like we're good at growing all sorts of green stuff. That's our show for today. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. Pass it along to a friend. It'll really help us out. If you want more news, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link on the show notes. We'll be back in a few more days with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. I really want to see your uh, cheetah print clogs next stand up. Oh, yeah. I, Next meeting we have. I just, yeah. I don't know how this is going to work out, but please wear them. I will. I'll <laughs> dig them up and I'll get the right camera view going. <laughs>
appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I need a head and a foot shot. 